Hi, my name is Chelsea and I'm with eventplanning.com. Today's video is how to calculate your alcohol cost for your wedding. And this is one of those questions that you will get time and again if you're an event planner and can be pretty stressful if you're a newbie or if you're planning your own wedding. So this really works with all events, the tips and the tricks I'm going to give you, but for the sake of keeping it nice and concise, we'll talk about it in the event of a wedding. So just to know off the bat, the easiest way to calculate the cost is that usually the budget for an open bar is between 10 to 20% of the overall budget for the wedding. Now, we will break that down further and give you a more precise or a more accurate guess for how many drinks each person is gonna have and how much that will all add up for alcohol. But first, I wanna talk about some ways that you can have a bar at your wedding. So of course, the most expensive will be an open bar where all the drinks are free for the guests and paid for by the bride and groom or whoever is paying for the wedding. There are other options for your bar. You could have just a full cash bar where guests pay for all of their drinks, or you could have some combination of the two. What I've seen in the past is sometimes the bride and groom will offer complimentary or open bar drinks for the first hour during cocktail hour, and then the reception drinks will be a cash bar. I've also seen just beer and wine being offered complimentary, and then anybody that wants a spirited drink has to pay cash. So those are some ideas of some combinations, and those can really help you cut costs as well. If you are going to have a completely open bar with all beer, wine, and liquor, there is a way to guesstimate or to calculate an average of how much you can expect to spend and how much alcohol you can expect to buy. So the way to do this is first you wanna go through the list of attendees and just mark down everyone who is an alcohol drinker. And we're not looking right now at who drinks more than somebody else because we're finding an average. So just excluding people who are underage that are invited or pregnant people or people who abstain from drinking. So we are just making a list of the guests in attendance who will most likely have at least one drink. This list, for the sake of easy math, we will say is 100 guests. The next way to calculate is that the average for the first hour, each guest will have two drinks. Every hour after that at the event is one more drink. So let's say your event is four hours long. That's five drinks per person. Two drinks in that first hour, and then one drink for the second hour, one drink for the third hour, one drink for the fourth hour for five. So 100 guests times five drinks per guest is 500. After that, we're gonna calculate that an average of each drink will say is $5, which can vary definitely depending on your venue. So you wanna talk to your venue and see what the price point is. But let's say again, for easy sake, that each drink comes out to be $5. So that 500 times five is 2,500. That is a rough estimate for your budget for the alcohol for your wedding, so $2,500. Now, we can get into the nitty gritty of it more. So if you're going back and you're looking at the guests and you're thinking, well, you know, my family isn't really drinkers, they're not big drinkers, I don't think that they'll drink as much, then maybe that number will be less because people will be having less drinks. Or maybe it's a lot of young friends that are invited to the event or the wedding and you know that they're really big drinkers and that they maybe really always have tequila shots or whatever it is. That number will of course go up. So you can play around with that number once you get that guesstimate then you have a range for if you think you'll spend more or less. So let's talk about the breakdown for types of alcohol to have at the wedding. A nice guideline is 50% wine. So if I was hosting a winter wedding or planning a winter wedding, then I would have a red wine and a white wine. If I was having an event in spring or summer, I would also include a rosé. 50% of that is wine. I like to include not too many choices for the guests. It seems like the more choices you have, the more people drink. So I usually like to do two choices for red and two choices for white. And if I'm gonna do a rosé, one choice for rosé. Some really easy choices for red is a Merlot and a Cab Sav. Easy for white is a Chardonnay and a Sauvignon Blanc. 
What's really fun though is that you can do the wine tasting yourself. So I like to go to a place that's inexpensive or that you can buy in bulk like Costco or BevMo, get some of the wines to try and then see maybe which ones what you think will go best with the food that's chosen for the caterer for the wedding. So if you're having a steak, having something more hearty for a red wine is fun. Whereas if you're having fish or something light in summer, having a lighter red wine is nice. The next percentage, so that's 50% of the total alcohol. The next percentage is 30% beer. For beer, I like to pick one or two of the easy go-to. So maybe Coors Light, Bud Light, Miller Light. Whatever you guys like, it's totally a preference game, but something easy right down the middle of the road. And then I also like to include one IPA or one specialty beer. Maybe that's good for whatever season it is. So if I'm helping throw an event in fall, maybe having a pumpkin beer is really fun. People really look forward to drinking that. The last 20% will be your liquor. And the reason for that is that for wine, you usually get five glasses per wine bottle. Whereas a liquor bottle, you usually get 16 drinks out of that liquor bottle for a 750 milliliter, I believe. So when you think about it, you can get to buy a lot less, and even though it is a little bit more money for the liquor, um, but you get to buy less of that, so that's 20%. And for hard liquor, I really like to look at the guest list, I like to look at the season that I'm in, and again, I don't wanna to give too many options, but I want everyone to feel that they have a drink that they can order that they're familiar with. So vodka and tequila are always on my list. And then if it's a summer wedding or something where I think people will be ordering mojitos or daiquiris, definitely a rum. If it is a winter wedding or there's you know, something that um, maybe the, the groom or, or the father of the groom is a big whiskey or scotch drinker, I'll definitely wanna have a scotch or a whiskey. And then gin has been pretty trendy lately. It shows up in a lot of the specialty drinks. So I usually like to get some gin as well. And again, this is just a rough guideline. So when you're going through that guest list, you're gonna look and you're gonna think, okay, well, I know my friends and my family's preferences, so maybe I'll get more of one thing or more of another, or perhaps you'll work in your specialty cocktails. And specialty cocktails are all the rage and I do not see them going anywhere. So one of my favorite tips and tricks for pleasing my bride and groom is to have them make a specialty cocktail. And this is usually something that I make myself afterwards. I'll do some beautiful hand calligraphy, but you can also get one off Etsy. And it will just be right on the bar and it'll say the two or three specialty cocktails. Or maybe I might also have the servers pass around the specialty cocktails when people get to cocktail hour. So a fun way to spruce up up a specialty cocktail is to add fun garnishes. So say that my bride always drinks vodka soda with a splash of cranberry. I might have that but add frozen cranberries as the garnish and maybe a sprig of rosemary and call it the blushing bride. And I've seen some brides and grooms get really, really creative with their drink menu and naming them after their dog or having a fun play on words with their new last name. So you can get really creative with this and it's something that guests love and it also helps you to better calculate your alcohol and what to buy if you're the one actually buying for the event. A lot of times you don't have to worry about the percentages of what types of alcohol to get because the venue will take care of that for you and you are just paying for the cost at the end. I also want to mention that another added cost is that you are most likely going to spend 20% of the total of that alcohol cost on tipping out your bar staff. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another really fun tip that I have that always wins over everyone is that I always ask the bride, the groom, and the parents of the bride and groom what their favorite drink is, and I let the bartender know if they see that person in line to have that drink ready for them and to make sure that we do not run out of whatever alcohol that is. I find that very important. It goes a long way and it's such an easy thing to do. Let me also just quickly talk about the champagne toast. So if you wanna do a champagne toast, it definitely adds a cost. Um, I think that the nice thing about a champagne toast is that the drinks aren't filled up to the full six ounces. It's usually a half pour, so three or four ounces. So you can get away with spreading out the bottles more, but you still are going to have to accommodate or calculate in the cost of having the champagne. And champagne prices can really range. So 
my tip here is to get a sparkling wine if you're looking to save costs because champagne the actual champagne can only be called champagne if it's if it comes from champagne france so if you get a sparkling wine you might get it from california or somewhere else that's not france and you might be able to get it at a discount you don't have to do the champagne toasts i've seen them come and go out of style Sometimes the venue also throws them in, which is really nice, but just something to consider that you might also have the added champagne toast cost. I would check with the venue on that, see what they usually offer. They might have an inexpensive champagne that they always do for the toast. So really important to look out for that. Okay, and that was so much information in such a short amount of time. So I hope that gave you some insight. I hope it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable when you're talking about the budget for the wedding and especially the budget for alcohol for the wedding or for any event that you're planning. If you want more information, please visit us at eventplanning.com. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. If you like it, we will know to make more videos like this. Thanks.